First, a couple of words on just on what olives are. You know, it's a fruit. It's Mediterranean. I picked my tree uh, from the little town of Three Rivers, which is just basically due east of us across the Central Valley in the Southern Sierras, right outside of Visalia. And I was looking at my records this morning and I put it in about uh, 16 years ago. And I got a mediocre crop this year, maybe nine gallons I'm doing right now in my garage, which is sizable. And I was adding up today all the people I want to give olives to, and I don't have enough to even save for myself if I were to do that. So there, there is a really fun thing to share and to, to put up, and they're great. So I was doing, I'll run you through my recipe, which is using a lye, sodium hydroxide, but essentially some people, well, you, when you pick a green olive, it's green, right? And then if it stays on the tree long enough, it will turn black and become a ripe olive. Mm -hmm. And there's a wonderful way of curing the ripe olives in Three Rivers and in these parts. If I've saved a huge portion of my tree to, to get black because they're really good and they're different. Some doggone rascal picks them all and eats them before mm -hmm. I could get them. But I have found like there's this Mexican restaurant in Three Rivers that has an olive tree. And then last, a couple of Decembers ago, my son and I were able to pick their olives. And to get the ripe ones, you just pick them and then process them right away by putting them in a pillowcase with canning salt until they're fully enveloped in the canning salt. And then you hang them up somewhere outside, but not in the direct rain, but a little mist won't hurt them. And you just jiggle, jiggle, jiggle it like that once a week. And then four to six weeks later, you have this beautiful cured ripe olive that's got, it's covered with salt, but if you just toss the salt off it's great and then if you want to soak it in a little olive oil and then a little fresh cardamom and some garlic you'll be the hit <laughs> and what they do commercially for ripe olives like Lindsay or you know these olives that you buy in the store in a can that are just ripe sliced or whatever they're picked green and then they're commercially oxidized you know the, the processing plants either with oxygen or or chemical um, so, but some people can cure um, olives just by using a water method, just by leaching them in water. And what you're getting out of the olives is very bitter. You know, you would dare not eat it when you get it off the tree. And it's called old European is this uh, bitter compound that gets extracted one of three or four ways. I think those black ones that you pick in December, by then in a good year that has rained, and it's leached a lot of those compounds out of the olive. But um, there's water curing, and then there's also brine curing, whereby you have to take each olive and slice it. And when I had nine or 10 gallons, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm already overwhelmed by how much I've taken on by picking so many olives. But those, you know, you would soak in the appropriate solutions for, you know, up to several months changing the solution once in a while and an olive is really sweet it's a it's a compliant um product because it'll do whatever you ask it to do if you soak it in salt you know it'll get salt inside when it's finally done it's a semi-permeable membrane so when you get your final product at the very end and you give it to someone they go oh too much vinegar so soak in fresh water overnight and it'll come to equilibrium and it won't be so salty or so sour if you want it to be more, then you just add whatever you want, and it just marinates and does whatever you'd like, so it's kind of cool. So what I do, and um, this is basically from the UC Extension, and I really put safety first when I process food and wildcraft wild things. I want to make sure safety comes first, so I trust the UC Extension, and I've modified it a little bit, especially the final brine solution. So um, this year I went over there and I got some help picking and I wasn't able to start processing until I brought them all back to Morro Bay, probably four or five days later and it was fine. And I did a little more research and you can pick the green olives and then you can wait for a little while, put them in cool storage. They don't have to be processed right away. Mm -hmm. um, so then what you, the first step you do is you, you bring them in and then um, you soak them in a lye solution. And lye is, it's just sodium hydroxide. It's like Drano, but it doesn't have the additives of Drano. So it's 
in the hardware store right next to Drano. It's just 100% live. That's what you use. And the even this will tell you um, lie. Use lemon or vinegar to neutralize splashes onto your skin. If swallowed, drink milk. 911. Do not vomit. <laughs> Sort of thing. Just because I wanted everybody to be safe, you know, I'm a I'm a nurse practitioner. I don't want anyone to get. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty harsh, but it's not. You know, this uh, dilution it might even tingle if it gets on your hands. I happen happen to wear rubber gloves when I do, but I, my hand never really touches it. And I have so many olives that I'm picking that when this um, recipe, I've modified it for my own needs. And what I have are five gallon buckets. And I would put a gallon of water in and mark it on the outside with a black Sharpie marker. That's one gallon, another gallon. Okay, that's two gallons of volume. So then where I process it, I just stick that bucket in my outdoor sink in my garage and fill it up so up to the two gallon mark. And then I add the appropriate amount of lye or salt. What are the buckets in the they're just five gallon, white five gallon They're buckets. Plastic. Yeah, plastic five gallon or blue, but white, you want white. So if you do, if you do it in volume, like I do, you want to be able to see that line, you know, so you can say, okay, now I'm up to two gallons and it's not exact, but it doesn't have to be for this. Mm -hmm. And just make sure you always add the lye to the water. Don't ever add water to lye because it's exothermic and can get kind of hot. So simple, but lye is nothing to be afraid of. So, you soak that first, it's like two tablespoons per gallon. So it's four tablespoons per the two gallons. And then um, and then in 12 hours, you drain it. And the way I drain it with my large volume is I have another five gallon bucket that I've drilled holes in, you know, up this high from the bottom and all on the bottom. So I stick that bucket in my sink and then I can drain the olives. And it's just a really nifty way of draining it without having to strain gallon by gallon. Because I have three such buckets being processed at the same time. Each bucket holds maybe three gallons of olives. So you rinse after 12 hours, you just add the same, do another fresh rinse, uh, another fresh solution of lye, the same uh, percentage. And the original directions say to do that for 12 hours and then to cut it to see if the color change goes all the way to the pit. but I don't ever do, they said the third soaking for lye and I never do that. And this year I didn't even soak the second one for 12 hours, I only did it for like eight. And then, because then it will be a nice, it won't be as soggy, it won't be as soft of an olive. It'll have a little more, you know, what texture to it, that might be good, we'll see. I'm finishing it, like I probably will put my olives into its final storage tomorrow when I do this. So, and so then you rinse it, and then after that, you just I just would soak it with fresh water. And it says to rinse like four times a day in your dreams. Um, I'm sorry, but I was working full time and I couldn't do that. But I try to rinse it twice a day. And then it said, here, this is a funny thing. It says something like um, soak every six hours, change the water every six hours for four to eight days until no lye taste. <laughs> that comes from the UC extension <laughs> until it doesn't taste like lye anymore. Like, we don't want all you want to know what that doesn't taste like, but I would change mine like three or two or three times a day. And then after about eight days, you, you eat it, you know, you can taste it and doesn't taste anything other than just like a kind of like an olive that's not quite there yet. And then there's a series of progressive uh, baths that you soak the olives in. Um, one is for two days, like six tablespoons per gallon of salt, just canning salt, right? Kosher salt, not iodized for two days. And then you switch that out and you cover it with a twice as much salt for one week. And then you do that again for twice as much yet still on a very salty brine solution for 12 days. So progressively saltier and saltier and saltier. And then at the end, it's time to just put it in its final storage brine. And I've created what my dad had an olive tree in Fresno and he did basically this, but then he just uh, cured, you know, his final storage brine was just salt water. And I gotta tell you, I don't think it was nearly as good as mine. And he also had a little moldy yuck on the top of it sometimes, mm -hmm. which, um, but what I have in this recipe will show you is a really great brine solution, which also works, by the way, 
it's the cat's pajamas for pickles. So it has water and salt and just a little tiny bit of sugar and vinegar, but it's not so much vinegar that it's going to make your, your eyes twist. And um, so for each jar, like <laughs> I was thinking today, I was like, I around like 40, seriously, 40 jars of going to be washed in my garage for me to store. I have some one gallon jars that I will store it in, but each jar I put in garlic, fresh garlic cloves, and then a uh, lots of oregano, and then other Italian herbs like marjoram and some thyme, mustard seed, celery seed, maybe a little red chili flakes. And you just put it in the storage, you know, in this really, really good brine, and then it'll marinate and come to equilibrium in about two weeks if you can wait that long. And then honestly, you can re, you know, I try to refrigerate it, but I've kept most of mine in my garage in Morro Bay. The garage stays rather cool, but they it lasts pretty well without refrigeration. And that's because I've added vinegar to it and that drops the pH and it prevents botulism from coming in to play. So it will last for a very long time. And um, it is just a fantastic item to uh, to share with with people. So that's about it. Now it begs the question, where does one find olives over here? <laughs> so then what I have in Three Rivers is a variety called Manzanillo and that's the variety is used commercially for olives. Um, the olives that are used for olive oil are generally smaller in size and they can be cured, but they're not quite as tasty for, for eating, but the same process can be used for them as well. Um, so what I have found on the in the Central Valley would also pertain, you know how Paso Robles is, there's all these olive orchards, right? You know, I love you, uh, you know, orchards and so, mm -hmm. They use olive trees sometimes on in wineries for decoration because they're such a beautiful, beautiful tree. And so I have heard that the Toluso winery has olive trees and they are a huge problem for them in the, in the winter because they drop this black fruit that stains the cement. And, the, you know, I always thought I personally don't need any more olives because I'm doing my own. But if I were interested, I would go ask them. I've already thought about it. It's like I would probably go for a wine tasting. <laughs> and say, you know, I just noticed you've got a bunch of fruit on those trees, and man, and I think that you would just be welcomed with open arms. I had a friend of mine in um, over in the Visalia area, Bonnie Douglas, as a matter of fact, and she would um, take a bunch of her gals out to Fresno, and they would pick the olive trees that were just on the streets of Fresno. Mm -hmm. And um, welcomely, because people don't want the mess in their yards, so they were well received. And uh, that's and then even if you find them black, you can still do the same process with a lye and the salt, and they they still come out. They are not they don't end up being a beautiful green olive. They're kind of a they're not totally black. They're more of a strange color, maybe a little purple mm -hmm. or something like that. But they still look delicious. So. I really welcome you to try to to do that. And if you have any questions, you can always call me and I'll be happy to share my advice with you. And then this is probably better served for when we do the herbal medicine talk, but this little booklet is just on the olive leaf and uh, it's the healing herb. So you have to ask yourself, what doesn't olive do for you? Because it is this goes through every single thing, you know, it's amazing for any inflammation, diabetes, obesity, you know, cancer, da, 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 da. And I keep thinking, you know, um, how nice it would be sort of a Mediterranean, you know, dream of just having people come by and just go out and pick some olive tree leaves and then just make a nice cup of hot tea to share with your friends. And I've done that when I had the olive tree. And so if any of you have non-fruiting olive trees, by all means, this olive, is an amazing thing. And during the pandemic, for goodness sakes, I had, I, even now I pick my leaves, you know, branches cause I prune and I dry it. And then I sometimes even kind of grind it up so I can keep it in a quart jar. And I would add it to my daily tea because it is an incredible anti-inflammatory, anti-anxiety, um, antioxidant. So uh, it's a beautiful plant and it's a kind of peace. Yeah. <laughs>